to the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the lord which made heaven and Thy foot to be moved, the Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. Oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Upon
worship you this morning. Yes, Lord. Here we are. Here I am, Lord, to worship you. Thank you. Yachat Baptist Church officers, its ministries and congregation, we'd like to welcome you to our service. We hope you enjoy it. Just a reminder, today is the first day of the month, so it is communion, so I'd like to remind you guys to get your elements. Also, if there's anybody out there that's interested in what goes on here at Antioch, please log on to antioch640.org. You can give us a call, 973-379-1465. Check us out on Instagram or YouTube. Also, it is Pastor Appreciation Month, and on behalf of myself, the entire congregation, the offices and ministries of Anti-Baptist Church Live, we'd like to say, Pastor, we appreciate you and we love you. At this time. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anti-Baptist Church Live. We hope you enjoy the service. God bless you.
but the blood of Jesus. Your blood, oh God. Hallelujah. Nothing but your blood, oh God. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for us. If it wasn't for the blood, hallelujah. Thank you for that blood that covers us as we go before the throne. Father, thank you. Thank you again just for the blood of Jesus that, that makes, Lord, uh, an imperfect man like me able to come before your throne, Lord. Thank you for that precious blood, Lord. We do not take it lightly at all, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord, when we remember that precious blood which was shed for us, Lord, that covers us, Lord, that makes us presentable as we come to you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, Lord, that that blood, Lord, there's no respecter of persons, Lord, but anyone that desires in their heart to come under that blood, Lord, is clean and can come before you, Lord, if, just, if they would just repent, Lord. So we ask, Lord, right now, Lord, that you would just come, Lord, and just dwell with us, Lord, wherever we may be, Lord. For those, Lord, that are, that are listening now, Lord, those that will listen later, Lord, we ask for your presence. We invite your presence, Lord. We invite you to come. Just sit with us, Lord, right now, Lord. We want to know, Lord, that we were in your presence today, Lord. We want to know, Lord, that you truly spoke to us today, Lord. We want to feel a touch from you today, Lord. For in that touch, Lord, is healing, Lord. In that touch, Lord, is, it will change our emotional state, Lord. In that touch, Lord, is everything that we need, Lord. So we need that today, Lord. We need to see you and know that we were with you today, Lord. And we want it, want it to be so, Lord, that others will know that you were with us today, yes. Lord that you would just reflect off of us, Lord, that your spirit would just pour out of us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that, that you allowed us, Lord, to be in your presence, Lord. We, we make ourselves available to you to do what you want to do, to have your way, Lord, to work through us, Lord, so that your kingdom we, we glorify, Lord, that you would be glorified, Lord, and again, that lives might be changed, Lord. So just work through us today, Lord, and throughout this week, Lord, and as we go forward, Lord, we want to be newer and better, Lord, for you, Lord. We want to better get to know you today, Lord. We thank you for all that you're going to do today, Lord, all that you've already done for us, Lord, this week, Lord, and beyond, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we know that we're here for a purpose today, Lord. And again, we just ask that you would touch anyone that does not know you, Lord, that, that they would come to know you today, Lord, that they, you would move on their hearts, Lord, and begin to work on their hearts, Lord, that if it's not today, Lord, that'll be the next day, Lord. But we know we're running out of time, Lord. Every day your, your return is coming closer, Lord. So, again, Lord, we just want to stress the urgency, Lord, on somebody's heart today, Lord. We thank you for what you've done, Lord. Have your way, and it's by your son, Jesus, that we're able to ask all this. Amen. Body. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Giving honor to God, who's the head of our lives. Amen. Amen. And we owe him everything. We give him everything. We come this morning to offer the praise and worship that we can. Amen. We, 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 if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise him enough. That's the old yes, expression. Yes. But the truth is, we only got one. So we might as well use the one we have to do the best we can to praise him. This morning I'm reminded um, before the term Pastors Appreciation Month was even known, I didn't even know that there was a month, and every month is something. It seems like every week you got another day, another month. Um, but I'm reminded of, and we had made the commitment, first Sunday in October, to remember uh, the wonderful patriarch, I'm going to call him, of this um, particular house, and none other than Reverend Clarence Austin, who, who this church, for those of you who don't know, uh, I got my make-believe cousin, Kenny Hobbs here, and uh, <laughs> from Hobbstown, all the way from Hobbstown, New Jersey, Amen. Which, which, which I'm so proud of. I'm, 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 I'm joining their family, because I don't know much about my own, so I'm part of that. But Kenny... This church has been around uh, 101 years, right, this year. And, and that's, that, in and of itself, that's worth just celebrating yes. it by itself, right? Yes. Yes. But, he, but here's the thing. Over 50 of those years, there was one pastor. Man. And so that's even a, a greater accomplishment when you think about this church standing. 
And so we take this time out to just celebrate uh, the legacy that is Clarence Austin and, and, and what he's done. And I'm often hearing that, you know, you're nothing like pa Pastor Austin. You know? you know, I don't do this like Pastor Austin. I don't do that. And I would argue with you, yes, I do. I do exactly what Pastor Austin did. And he said, what do you mean by that? I said, because here's what, if I learned anything, the one thing he did consistently was listen to the voice of the Lord. Yes, yes. And guess what? He didn't care what y'all thought. Amen? <laughs> if he thought God said it, then he brought it. And we're talking about legacy. If we're going to follow that legacy, then no, no, we're not going to always do the same practices because this is a different time, different day. Y'all are sitting here with masks on. Come on. Things have changed. It's different. But we can still have the same fervor, the same passion, the same tenacity to say whatever God gives us to do, we're going to do to the best of our ability, irrespective of if there are snafus and things that go wrong and, 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 and you know, uh, Internet that goes down and cameras that don't work and people that don't come. doesn't matter. You're here, I'm here, and more than importantly, the, 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 the anointing of the Lord is here. So, so in keeping with the legacy of this great man, we just want to give God the praise and thank God for his example to us. And what, guess what? We're going to continue to worship and to praise him in this house. Can you give God a praise? So this morning we're going to ask, um, I think we're in line for our choir to do our, our um, sermonic, what do y'all call it, sermonic selection? That's, isn't that so proper? The sermonic selection <laughs> at this time. God bless you. love to mention that Pastor Hobbs is the one who wrote this song. Who else would I give the praise? Yes. Who else would I give the glory? Nobody else but you, Lord.
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning, if you can. Thank you, Jesus. For where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty. And you know what? When we talk about liberty, that liberty means, <laughs> oh, God, I'm free in Christ. I'm free to worship him. I'm free to adore him. The irony this morning, though, and first of all, thank you, choir, so much for allowing me to share that song that was just in my heart for so long and you did it better than justice and we thank you for that um but who else would i give the praise that same jesus that we give praise and honor shouldn't we also give obedience to and there's sometimes we are so fixated with worship right oh i'll just worship him because he's good he's kind 
He's all this stuff. I, I'll fall out on, on the floor for him. I'll do all that. But then when it's time to be obedient, uh, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. That's a whole nother, you know, can of worms, as they say, for in the end of it all, what obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's the word of God lets us know. And so this morning, just for a few moments, we just want to talk about that in respect to the celebration we're having called communion. So we're here this morning to celebrate Jesus Christ and communion. This is a party, y'all. I hope y'all know this is a party. We are here. It's party time. It's time to just come and let go. And guess what? This party this morning, I have as a theme, it's all about you. I have news for you. This party today is for you. Let me tell you something. This, these stained glass windows, these are for you. Jesus don't need stained glass. Amen. Those comfortable pews, the cushions they have there, that's for you. The cameras, the, the internet, uh, what else we got here? The, the praise team, all the stuff, the mics, you know, the things that we have done, that's for you. That's because what we love you. Those watching and those who are here and wherever, however we communicate, this is all about you. So this morning, I want you to get a little happy. This is all about you. Don't, and I'm talking about you individually, yes, us collectively, but you got to think, yeah, he did this for me. And I would like you to look at the Luke, the 15th chapter of Luke. The 15th chapter of Luke, we're going to start the first verse, but as you get that, I just want to make one announcement. And I want to just thank all my new members of the Dream Team. Amen. <laughs> we got the, if y'all didn't hear last week, Kenny, you wasn't here. Let me tell you about this Dream Team. We put together a team of folk. I'm going to ask you to be on mine, too. We're going to put, put a team of folk who are committing for the next 12 months, right, for every week in the year. That's 52 weeks for the next 12 months to find 12 people in your life Friends, relatives, frenemies, enemies, anybody. 12 people in your life that you're going to commit to once a week sending those 12, some inspirational, some loving and kind and caring, some information that's going to prayerfully lead them to Christ. That's the mission. We want to lead everybody and those who, even if you have some folk who already know Christ, lead them closer to Christ. And we made a response last week, and I'm making it again because we still got room for more. That if you want to be on this team, right, all you have to do is just text me at pray with me now. Can everybody remember that? Pray with me now at gmail.com. This is a digital ministry, a digital, what well, we become digital disciples. And from using you, you got a phone, you, some of y'all on it right now. You, you got. <laughs> You got a phone, you got a computer, all that. We're going to use this what, to reach out to the world. And we want to not just talk about it. I love the James. Uh, in the book of James, James says, don't just be hearers of the word, but doers. Don't just talk. Don't just tell me, yeah, I'm living a life. No, no. What are you doing specifically? What, how are you putting yourself out there? Oh, and, and very often we don't, I'm just, let me go ahead and preach. I'm just complaining now. But, but, but no, we, we got to be willing to put ourselves, Christ put himself out there for us. I'm wondering what are we willing to do for him? And that's actually the crux. That's a good segue into this scripture this morning. Now, Luke the 15th, and I'm just going to read one through six. And it says here, then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to Jesus to hear him, Right? And the Pharisees and the scribes complain, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. You know, people worry about who you're eating with, right? So he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lead, loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And you say amen to the reading of God's word. Now, I can't tell you how often myself and other preachers, we just preach that. 
by itself. There is so much in this that is just so rich and so wonderful, and Jesus is just teaching us, and we're being instructed. But the truth of the matter is this is just one of a series of things Jesus said in response to what the Pharisees were complaining about. So first he said, here's the sheep that was lost. Then he talks next about, uh, and what woman, if she lost, she had 10 gold coins, 10 silver coins, and she lost one of them in the house. And which one wouldn't sweep that whole house? That's like, um, let me make it more uh, appropriate for us because, you know, we don't think coins are that valuable. Let's just say you had, uh, you from the hood, and you had 10 stacks. <laughs> you had 10 stacks in the house. I don't know where you got it from, but you had 10 stacks. <laughs> and you lost the stack. <laughs> now, who wouldn't tear that house up? <laughs> I put the other nine stacks on the side, but I'm gonna find my 10 grand. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna let that 10 grand just go and act like, well, I got nine other. No, no, that's value, right? And then this third story, he said, with the prodigal son. Many of us remember that. Who, someone who had a son, and the son, you know, lost his mind and said, Dad, I'm out of here, and I'm taking my stuff with me. And he goes, and of course, he squanders everything. And that parent, and anyone who's a parent, could understand the hurt. Right. The, first of all, the, it just it just hurts your heart that your children will go and you know that's not going to turn out good because, you know, they're not ready yet. They're not mature enough to, you know, you just know that child and they go out and sure enough, they squander everything and lose that. But wouldn't you be so happy when they come back home? I don't even want to talk about what you did, son. Just uh, I don't even want to know half the stuff you didn't did, but just come on home and we get it together. And so that's what Jesus was talking. So this was one conversation. It wasn't as if he talked about uh, the sheep and, and then that was over. And he talked about the other thing. No, this was one whole conversation. Later on in that same conversation, he started scolding the Pharisees, but we won't talk about that. Let's just look at these three examples. Because sometimes we look at the examples and we don't see the entire message. You know how you, you, you catch half of somebody's message? You, need, you eavesdrop into somebody's conversation, you heard them, then you run out and start telling people what they said, and that ain't even what they meant. And you go around like, why did you tell everybody that? I heard you say, that's what I, I might have said, but that's not what I was saying. That's not what I meant. And sometimes when we look at the Word of God, we have to look at it in its totality. Stop breaking it up, and let's look at the whole thing. Jesus was making a point, and the point he was making, that he was talking to Pharisees, who were, who were getting on him about talking to sinners. And so in front of those sinners and in front of the Pharisees, he said, let me explain something to you, that from my perspective, why you call them sinners, from my perspective, why you think they're worthless, I think they have great worth. And so when he went to get the sheep, he went to get the sheep, not because he was such a wonderful shepherd, which he is, not just because he was a wonderful shepherd, but because he saw value in the sheep. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? When that woman, she didn't leave the other stacks because she, you know, she was just so uh, uh, caring. She, she was looking for that stack because that stack was valuable. I had plans for that money. I can't just throw that money away. So she looked for the coin. They said she swept the house clean until she found it. Anybody ever lose something and you say, I'm not going to stop until I find that. I know if I lose, I'm cheap. If I lose $20 in the house, $10, I'll be there all day long. I can't sleep. Where my money at? I can't figure out what happened to it. And finally, your children. Come on. Anyone who's a parent or anyone even has a close relationship in your life and, and they go astray. Which one of us wouldn't just be waiting and waiting and hoping and praying that they came back? Why? Because they're valuable. So if we lose the value that Christ has for us, we lose the, really the inference of the story. We lose the whole thing. That the reason why he's talking to the Pharisees, he said, these sinners to me have more value than you. Or equal. He said, because when I find them, you know what I'm going to do? Right? And that's that part that says, you know, heavens rejoice more over the one that come back than the others that don't need no repentance. Y'all think y'all are saved and sanctified, but you know that one I went out there and got, that one I, I rescued, that, that, that one I, I brought back home? He said, not only am I bringing back, but I'm having a party. 
I'm, I'm going to give them the biggest party. What, the, the, the son that came back, what did he do? He put the, the robe on him, and he put the ring on his finger. The woman called her, all her neighbors together. And then the, with the sheep, he called all his neighbors and friends and said, listen, the sheep that was lost, he's back, everybody. Let's have a party. I'm here to tell you this morning that this party we're having is for every lost sheep. It, it, this party we're having, oh, and guess what? And I was that lost sheep. I was the one that was lost. I was the one that now is found. You ought to be happy about the fact that Jesus at one point found you. He washed you up and took you from danger. He brought you from what, um, you know how, how we used to say in church, well, uh, from the muck and the mire and, and place your feet on a rock to stay. We have so many analogies. We have so many things that we have made. That's the good news. Let me, can, y'all know I've got to twist to this. Y'all ain't, I'm not leaving right there. Because when he brought the sheep back, He didn't bring the sheep back to keep partying. He brought the sheep back and had a party, but he didn't bring back a party sheep. After the party, (laughs) you understand, that sheep had to do what sheep do. That sheep had to go with the rest of the sheep. What do sheep do? Sheep, I got to share sheep every now and then. Matter of fact, mama might want some lamb chops. I don't know. And so that sheep came back because the, the, the sheep had a job to do. With the value Christ saw in the sheep, the value that woman saw in the coin, and the value the father saw in the son was because, what, they had a job to do. They had a position. They had something of worth. There was a quid pro quo when we come to Christ. Yes, he saved your soul, but he saved you on purpose for a purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He, 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 served, he saved you. You think that Jesus just lo- is so loving and kind. He saves me, and it doesn't matter what I do, and I can come to church, and I can, I can just, and just go through life partying, and he's okay with that. No, no, y'all got it all wrong. He saved you. Let me, let me explain something, what salvation is. First of all, he gave you the very best that heaven has to offer. He put inside you, oh my goodness, are you, are you, do you think about that sometimes? That the greatest thing that ever known to man on planet earth is the spirit of God that resides in you. That animates these, these sinful bodies that he's taken us out our hearts of, of stone and given us hearts of flesh. That he's taken us and washed us and cleansed us and called us righteous who had no business being called righteous. Those of us who have no business being called holy, even to this very moment, you're thinking about yourself like, well, y'all don't know me like I know me. And I'm amazed that he calls us that. But the reality is if Christ sees you as holy, then you're holy. If he did that for you, then you have no right to say you're not holy. It is in an, it is a going against. If Jesus said, I've cleaned you up, how are you going to say, well, I'm not clean? No, Jesus said, are you arguing with me? I said that you're holy. I say that you're righteous because my blood is upon you. And anybody that my blood is upon, I've cleaned you up. So don't ever say you're not holy. Don't ever say you're not righteous. No, no, no. You're going against Christ. And Christ saying, I saved you with my own blood. But now, after having done that, there's a call upon you. And sometimes we abdicate our responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we say, well, that's the pastor's job. So you don't want to have pastor's appreciation month. And I'm so glad it is. You know what I would appreciate more than anything? <laughs> that everybody get on their grind and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> well, you're supposed to do. Who, where did y'all get half the stuff from that we're supposed to do? We have made up stuff. We have created it. I hate to say this, that this room in and itself is, an exa- is a perfect example of what we are able to create. And we create these things, and we create these wonderful walls and these wonderful decorations and all this stuff. And trust me, I love it more than anybody. Y'all don't understand. I love pomp and circumstance. I love the dressing up. I love wearing my bow tie. When else would I wear a bow tie? <laughs> Except here in the church on, on First Sunday. I, wait, I, I have a waiting for First Sunday. I said, oh, I can't wait for First Sunday. Because this is a party, though. But after the party's over, I got to take my bow tie off and get on my grind. After the party's over, I got to do what Christ has for me to do. And part of of, of the, the mystique of Jesus as it comes to us is that you can't just be your own once he comes into your life. That sheep would have died had he not saved him. 
But now that I did save you, oh, he says, you owe me your life. That, that money would have been lost forever. But now that I found you, right, I can do with you as I please. The son, you lost everything. You have no more inheritance. So every bite of food you eat, every drink that you drink is grace and mercy because you already squandered the thing I gave you. But now that you're back home, and I, I, guess what? Guess what? You know what? After this, I wish the Bible kept on talking about it. But can't you imagine after the party and the other brother was mad that oh, you give him a party, you didn't give me one. You know, the father said, don't worry. Guess what? Some of them chores you was doing, I'm going to give it right to him. <laughs> you ain't got to wash another dish. You ain't got to do that because, boy, you're back home. Now, start washing them dishes. You done missed how many years of dishes? How many years of scrubbing the floor? How many years of going out to the, to the, to the field and doing the work that this family needs to do, get done? God calls you on purpose for a purpose. You are saved because he needs you. He, God has need of you. And he don't need you just to dance in the shower and the party. Yeah, yes, yeah, like, some of us are the best partiers ever. We can dance, we can shout, but when it comes time to doing what God has for you to do, where are you? Oh, yes, when it comes time for God, for you to, what, to go to the fields and the highways and the hedges and compel people to be saved, where are you? That's what makes Jesus happy. This morning, I'm done. I'm done fussing. That, that was a fussing message, right? But this morning, as we get ready to have communion, communion, very sacred, right, isn't it? He said, as often as you do this, what do this in remembrance of me. But I'm reminded of this. Very often we have replaced, we have deified things that shouldn't be deities. We have made holy things that Christ never made holy. We have said, and there are things that we repent for. Watch this. Even in our prayers, there's things we repent for that, that, we, that, that you know, your parents have made up, grandma made up. You know, cleanliness is extra guidance. I'm sorry for being not clean. Where'd that come from? Grandma. I'm not going to repent for grandma. <laughs> I'm only repenting for the stuff that Christ told me to do. But very often we mix up those things. At the, watch this, at the expense of what Jesus asked you to do. And that's where we have a problem. Oh, it's okay to do, listen, I'm not getting our cultural dynamics and the things we do as a society to have a moral and wonderful society. These are wonderful things. But they should never be at the expense of not doing what Jesus asked you to do. No, I stopped cussing. And I don't, I don't I, you know, I stopped chewing tobacco. And, and <laughs> I start, stopped doing all this other stuff. This is great, great. But guess what? Jesus said, did you, did, did you forgive your cousin? Mm -hmm. oh, I ain't did that, Jesus. You see what I'm saying? But did, did, did you say, did you call that person I put in your heart to call and show them some love? Oh, I didn't do that. But I'm not, you see, I'm not repenting for that. I'm repenting for the other stuff that you see me do. But the things that God put in your heart, he's asking, when you come to my communion, what, what, come discerning the Lord's body. What's that mean? That means what? Lord, I appreciate what you have done in your body for me and having died for me and having brought me back. That's what, I'm, that's what I need to do. Whatever you tell me to do, whatever you ask me to do, whatever you demand of me, that comes first and foremost. And if y'all don't appreciate it, you say, well, why are you doing it? I'm sorry, but I got to follow him. If somebody don't like the, the words you're saying, I'm sorry, but this is what Christ is, is compelled me to say, yeah. compelled me to do. And beyond everything, I owe him my all. I owe him my life. I owe him my existence. Oh, yes, yes, saints of God. We're not the sheep, necessarily. We're not a piece of money, and we might not be the son. But guess what? We are the called, the appointed, and the anointed of God. And we have a responsibility with the power we have, with the authority we've been given, hallelujah, right? With the anointing upon our lives, with the Shekinah glory all around us. The most we can do is sing and shout. The most we can do is dress up in ties. Is that what you're telling me? Or can we turn the world upside down? I prefer to believe that we could turn the world upside down. Can you give God a praise this morning? All right, that was my second ending. God bless you. <laughs> and may heaven smile upon you all. Come on, now we're going to have communion. We're going to ask um, Deacon Walker and Elder Savage.
to come. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as he was betrayed, Jesus gave his life freely for others. And this bread represents that sacrifice that he made for all of us on the cross. Break it, take it, and eat ye all of it in remembrance of him. Hallelujah. And this cup represents the blood of the new covenant. This is the precious blood of Jesus, which watches us from all our sins. Drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be rejoicing. Somebody. Huh. This is not just a ceremony. This is not just something we do to appease ourselves. But by his stripes, what? We are healed. The, the, the blood that Jesus shed for us on Calvary, right? It empowers us. It infuses us, oh God, with the essence of Christ that, does, that let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus that beloved now we the sons of God that the many scriptures that we have remembered and that speak to us now come to life what in these mortal bodies isn't it wonderful to know that Christ made a way what to be with us forevermore 
Oh, he's ri- do y'all know he's risen? And right, I'm talking about he's really risen. Not, not just, no, no, not just a figment of our imagination. That that same guy that walked on this earth is still alive. After 2,000 plus years, he's still alive, for he's risen. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. And guess what? When he shall appear, we're going to be like him. I I don't know what he is right now, but whatever form he's in, and we're going to be like him. And everyone that has this hope in them purifies himself even as he is pure. This is our hope, folks. We're not going to be like this always. Yeah, I know. My back hurt. It ain't going to hurt always. (laughs) You know, I, I got ailments, I got things, I got bills. I'm not going to always have these bills. Uh, there will come a time, oh God, faith, there will come a time that we'll be right here on planet earth, reigning with him. Thy kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm glad about it. I don't know about you. So this is the first step. Now listen, we're going to leave here with power. Hallelujah. We're leaving here with power. We're leaving here with, with, with deliverance. We're leaving here with victory. And so guess what? When you, don't, you don't lose it when you walk out that door. You gain more victory as you follow him. You gain more power as you listen to him. You gain more, oh thank you Jesus, authority, oh God, as you walk in your purpose. Leave here this morning and walk in purpose. Walk in power. Walk, oh God, thank you, as he designed you to walk. Because it's all about you this morning. He's done this. He died on Calvary. He came. He's coming back for you. He set all this up so that you and I can be the warriors that he intended us to be. For now, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Don't stop conquering. Don't walk around. How can a conqueror walk around scared? How can a conqueror walk around frightened? How can somebody that has the power of Christ, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Nothing can stop us. Nothing, no gates of hell shall ever stop us. But instead, we're going to stand with victory, stand in power, stand in purpose. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the purpose. I don't look like I'm powerful, but I am. You might not look like you're victorious, but you are. You're more than what you look like. You're more than what you seem like. You've got Christ on the inside. Can you give God a praise right now? I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Well, the party's almost over. Time to go to work. Somebody got to clean up. <laughs> Somebody got to wrap up. <laughs> Sweep up <laughs> until the next time. But we thank God that we're here now. If you don't mind, let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir, for, for being here this morning with us. You're a good and kind and wonderful Savior, and we yes, love you so yes, much. Lord. And we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to gather together, this opportunity to sup with you and you with us. We thank you, Lord, just for all the many blessings. But more than anything, we thank you for considering us. Yes. <laughs> for we were that lost sheep, and you, and you found us. Yes. <laughs> we was that lost coin, and you discovered us. We were that wayward child that came back home with nothing, but you gave us the grace to be in your presence one more time, and we thank you for it. And we ask even now that we live up to the expectation that you have for each and every one of us. You have a glorious expectation. We're supposed to live in power, in purpose, on purpose, doing the things you've called us, and we will not abdicate our responsibility, but instead we will do that which you've called us to do by your strength and the power. We proclaim it now. We believe it now. As long as, as, long as you help us, as long as you stay with us, Lord, we can do it because we can't do it by ourselves. We thank you for these wonderful people, yes. for the sacrifice they've made. We ask you to bless them abundantly. These things we pray in the master's name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let all those people say amen and amen. amen. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.